This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The Open Championship is coming up this week, the fourth major of this year in golf, and it is going to be a delight because both Rory McIlroy and Scotty Scheffler are entering in top-notch form right now. We're going to break down the odds. One of those guys wins it, break down the favorites, break down the best betting values over at FanDuel Sportsbook by talking to Brandon Gadula and getting his read on Royal Liverpool. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for Numberfire. Joined here, as mentioned by Brandon Gadula. Check him out on Twitter at Gadula13. Find his work over at Numberfire, where he is the senior managing editor. Brandon, the Open Championship is coming. Rory McIlroy hot off a win at the Genesis Scottish Open. I feel like this sets up to be one of the more fun Open Championships in quite some time. How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I know... You know, like last week, you were in your glory because the golf was over before you woke up. Uh, I know you don't like to watch the golf. Uh, no, the second wave was teeing off uh, when I got up, which meant that, A, I got to have some three ball payouts, maybe, you know, around the time that I woke up. And B, I still got to watch the second wave. Mm. So tell me the downside in that, because I don't want to be near a screen after work. And if the golf is done by then, I don't have to worry about it. So I feel like, again, my approach, my desire is fully optimized. Well, I I like to watch at least the final round, see how things are going, see if anyone's making a charge. And you can. Uh, Yeah, I'll just be up it. When it starts, when the when the final like final grouping starts on Sunday, it'll probably be like six. That's not not talking. Jim, Jim, I'm not talking final group. I'm talking the final round. You want to watch like. Um, I like okay. to see if anyone's making a charge, how things are playing. Yeah. You want to watch Patrick Cantlay go nine under to finish I'm a guest. 22nd I'm <laughs> on a guest Sunday? Here. Well, yeah, he's been doing that a lot lately, but, um, yeah. m- you know, maybe it's a little bit of a better week. I wish you didn't say his name. Sorry. In that, in that, in that, later on? Was that, in that was fashion, that... but. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Uh, retract that. We'll go back and edit that after the fact because I always go back and edit things because I care so much and so deeply about how this comes across. But honestly, like, I feel like this, I was excited for the Open to begin with, but then you add in the fact that Rory won at the Scottish Open. I feel like to me, it really sets up some like some good storylines. And I feel like golf is at its best when the best golfers are in their best form. And you can't really argue against Scheffler or McElroy with how well they're golfing right now. Yeah, I mean, they're the the two top guys. Um, it's, it's reflected in the betting odds. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of crazy because of how quickly we just like write off John Rom from that yeah. conversation. It's like, oh, no, Rom's like dust. He's third at best, and it's like, I mean, I think he's got a pretty big win this year, not that long ago, that we're all kind of forgetting about. But, I mean, it's not like he's a complete afterthought uh, in the betting market or anything like that, but sure feels like it whenever Scheffler's plus 650, Rory's plus 700, uh, and Rom's, what, plus 1,200 right now. So, uh, and and, I mean, Rom... Rom's made comments about like knowing where he, where he is in terms of the favorites, but I'm sure even he would would uh, admit that he shouldn't be the favorite. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, he's still very good at golf. He's very intriguing. We're going to talk about John Rom later on. We're talking about Scheffler, McElroy, etc. to get you ready for this year's Open Championship in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Tomorrow, we are previewing the Women's World Cup with Dr. Ed Feng getting his read on this year's field. We'll talk some Team USA with Ed, get his read on whether they're properly rated in the betting market. Talk about that with Ed coming up on Wednesday. Also, uh, later on today, over on the FanDuel YouTube page, we'll have our DFS preview of the Open Championship breaking down 
our favorite golfers in each salary tier over on FanDuel.com. If you want that, you can watch it live on the FanDuel YouTube page, Noon Eastern, or check it out on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed or the FanDuel TV Plus app, both for that and for this show, each covering the spread, each solo shot over on FanDuel TV Plus, and Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and Roku as well. If you like what you hear, subscribe to Covering the Spread and and leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Speaking of, the U.S. Women's World Cup, the U.S. Women's Soccer Team is taking on the world, and you can take home bonus bets every time they win with FanDuel because right now, new customers get $100 in bonus bets guaranteed plus another $10 in bonus bets for every Team USA win. Sign up between now and August 3rd, then place your first $5 bet to unlock your bonus bets that way you'll be all set to bet on everything from total goals to player props all tournament long however you want to play don't miss a chance to get ten dollars in bonus bets for every team usa win plus one hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed make every moment more with fanduel america's number one sports book Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hope is here. Gambling helpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. In New York, one 870 hope and wire Text open Y and must be 21 plus in President Select State's first online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non withdrawable bonus bets, which expire in seven days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, Brandon, this year's edition of the Open Championship will take place at Royal Liverpool, the second straight event at a Lynx course. They have not played an Open here since 2014, though. So, shot link date, I believe, began in 2015, generally. Could be wrong. No, oh, I'm way wrong. 2003. What? 2003. Wow. Way off. Decade off. Sick. Anyway, um, they haven't played here since 2014. They did not have shot link data then. I know that part. What I should we know that- about this course before we place our bets? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to I feel like 2003 is the the number burned in my head, but uh with the open, I think last year was the first year we've had shot link data at an open. Um we've had it for the US Open for a lot longer than that, but yeah. I uh, really hope it's uh, 2003 or else I'm going to feel silly, but that, that's the number that I think 2015 is the year that, like data golf has data back to, which is why I assume that nothing existed before then. Well, you know, there's no way of knowing uh, the Correct. answer to this. So Correct. What we do know is that we don't have a whole lot of shot link data from any historical uh, or many historical opens or any of the opens at Royal Liverpool. Uh, yeah, we've had this event here at uh, in 2006 and 2014. One coincidentally by Tiger Woods and Rory McIlroy, respectively. So some generational wins uh, there. And one thing that I'll note is that this uh, this play is a par 72 in those two years. It's now a par 71. So just kind of take a note there. I think that stuff matters a little bit, but it gets a little bit overblown with what the par is. It just really has to do a bit with more with winning score. Um, and and it, it comes down to like how many par fives there are. So, yes, so like it matters. But, you know, that, that's basically um, not something that I put a whole lot of stock into. Uh, but notably, the winning scores were 18 and 17 under, uh, respectively. And in those years, in, in 2006, only seven golfers were 10 under or better. So pretty pretty big separation there uh, from the winning score. But also, it wasn't that everyone was just like Pepper in the 15 under range. Um, you know, Tiger was able to separate. And so did Rory, again, at 17 under. 11 golfers finished at 10 under or better in 2014 so um that's kind of one thing that i like to look at is the winning score which is not like groundbreaking but also keep in mind just because the winning score reaches one sort of maybe outlierish number 
Um, that's not necessarily indicative. It's going to depend a lot on the weather um, for this week, which is always the case whenever we're playing, you know, in, in Great Britain, England, Ireland, Scotland, would you know, take your pick. Um, but yeah, that's basically uh, at the top, the winning score. I think it's probably going to need to be in the like 12 to 15 range, unless someone really puts it all together and, and the, the conditions are, are pretty calm, but you know, so what do we do without shot link data to try to figure out what matters here? We don't even have like GCSAA numbers with like how wide the fairways are, how large the greens are on average, all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of just guesswork. Um, and unfortunately, if you dig back into those two events and look at, you know, you can look at stats leading in, which is sort of helpful for how players were playing leading in, but it doesn't tell us anything about how they actually played. So that's that's kind of a, a downside to that. If you look at just in tournament stuff, you're going to see more of an emphasis on putting. Um, but you know, with that, uh, I chose to look at the two in tournament stats and try to find any sort of correlations. And frankly, everything was pretty weak in terms of the total strokes gained numbers. Um, which for anyone, you know, you can figure out total strokes gained without shot link data. That's just your scoring differential to the field. But um, the drive, the two driving stats, distance and accuracy, didn't do a whole lot to explain the scoring in those two years. You know, greens and regulation was moderately uh, indicative. Uh, same for scrambling. Scrambling is a tricky stat, and for anyone who doesn't know, scrambling is just when you miss a green and regulation, do you do you save par? Um, and then you know putts per green and regulation, which again is the kind of stats we're looking at whenever you don't have shot link data. This is kind of a weak to mild correlation. Uh, for the irons, wedges, and putting. So the way that I'm kind of looking at that is I want some distance off the tee, but a lot of golfers can get some rollout. So it's not an absolutely vital stat, but I would like to see some positive driving distance from the guys that I'm in on this week. And then from there, just sort of, and this is the case for every major, a complete game. So if you're struggling with the driver uh, in terms of accuracy, you're probably fine. Want to see some distance, but other than that, Want to see some good complete game, um, specifically with the irons and putting, which is again not not groundbreaking, but it's going to matter uh, in a field this tough. If we're talking complete game, we should talk about the two favorites at the top of the field right now. Maybe not complete game, but yeah. close enough. With Scotty Scheffler being plus six fifty and Roy McIlroy seven to one, McIlroy of course winning the Genesis Scottish Open, but Scheffler still the favorite at plus six fifty. So when you look at those two specifically, Brandon. Has Rory done enough to convince you that he should be the favorite this week, or do we still lean Scheffler because the tee to green game is so nasty? Yeah, so it depends on how you mean done enough for me. For my model, no, um, because it looks the past year of data gives weight for field strength and recency, and it still views Scheffler as the clear favorite for this week. For me personally, I would still say I don't think so, but it's more of a fear-based thing, which I try to sort of remove, which is why I like to lean on the model um, so much. But, you know, Scheffler is basically a shot per round better than anyone in the field with his tee to green game um, over the past 50 rounds, according to data golf. It's pretty like it's pretty wild. He's it over the past 50 rounds, tee to green. 3.29 strokes gained um, per round with the tee to green. And there's two live tour players there. So that's a very small sample. And then it's Roy McElroy to 2.19. Um, that's su a substantial gap. And yes, like Scheffler's putter is a bit problematic. I know that. Um, but I cannot say that Roy deserves to be favored uh, for me over Scheffler. And if I would say that, it's literally just a fear because Rory played uh, as well as he played last week. So that's not to say that I don't have interest in Rory, that I think he's like has no chance of winning. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at seven to one, I'm not there. And then even for Scheffler, frankly, I'm not there either. I think these numbers are a little too short this week. Which is a deviation from what we saw last week, where Scheffler was a betting value for you. Finished top three for... <laughs> The 37th consecutive time. <laughs> I feel disgusting. like he has not finished outside the top five since April 15th, April 16th. So it's been a hot second there. So for once, we're not seeing value in Scotty Scheffler. The guy you mentioned before is John Rom, and John Rom is lurking there. He is currently 12 to 1, and we have not seen Rom for a bit. And the last time we saw him, missed the cut at the Travelers, had some 
shaky events, but I feel like Cyborg John Rom is not as long ago as we may think it is right now. So looking at Rom at 12 to 1, any incentive for you to, you know, quote unquote buy low on him, or is the betting market handling him pretty properly? Yeah, so that's basically why I like the model. I you know, I I think every now and then I should tweak it, do this or do that. But basically what my model does is tells me who's been really good over the past year and implies where their odds should be based on who they're playing, some other course adjustments, that that kind of stuff. And while Rom's not a value there, I have him at uh, plus 1350. Um, so I'm not like opposed to just really tracking him. Or if I don't find anything else, for example, I would get there uh, for Rom because my model just really likes him. Um, you know, we're talking about like, how long it's been since we had, as you put it, Cyborg, John Rahm. Uh, he was T16 at the Memorial when he finished second in strokes gain approach behind just Scotty Scheffler, and he was 61st out of golfers who made the cut in putting. That could have been a much better result. Uh, T10 at the U.S. Open with great approach play as well. Um, scrolling for him. He was 16th in approach play. Top 25 in all four strokes gain stats at the U.S. Open, and Sure, he wasn't at the top of mind uh, for the U.S. Open, but that's just kind of where we are with with the state of golf, where it's been so long. Um, and, and Rom has a lot of wins this year, so I, I'm not quite there at twelve to one, um, but plus thirteen fifty is where my model would would like him. So um, I'd probably be fine jumping in at thirteen to one, but that's what I'm I'm tracking very closely. So let's say hypothetically we get some lengthening because odds do shift quite a bit. Let's say you get 14. Are you leaping to take 14? Is that a pretty enticing number for you where you're in fully on Rom at that point? Yeah, I'd be interested to hear any cases against John Rom right now. Yeah. Um, and you, I can't make any. Sure. And if it's what's he done for me lately, it's like, boy, how quickly we forget. Right. Um he won the Masters in yeah. April. It is July. <laughs> yeah, he's got, uh, what, four wins in 2023? Yeah. So, like, the, the calendar year alone, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. And, yeah. like, you, if you look at his, you know, his data, it, the ball striking's there. The wedge is kind of coming and going a little bit. The putting coming and going a little bit, but not to the point where we need to, like, just be worried. He's a really good long-term putter. So, mm. you know, yeah, we're we're leading off the discussion with Scheffler and Rory, but keep an eye out for John Rahm uh, this week. So we're not there on the favorites. Where do you see value right now in the outright market at FanDuel Sportsbook? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> not a good start. <laughs> well, two names that won't surprise anyone if they listen to me. You Patrick sure Cantlay and Xander Schauffele? Absolutely. <laughs> Love and it. again, I'd be open to listening to the cases for why these – these guys are not good plays. And the thing, the only thing that people will tell me is that they haven't won a major or that they quote unquote can't win or don't win. And that's silly. Um, Patrick Cantlay is what? 20, uh, 23, 22. 22. Mm. Um, I have him at plus 2000. So 20 to one missed the cut at the Genesis Scottish open, but lost a lot of strokes with the short game, which is uncharacteristic for him. Uh, he would have ranked top 20 in ball striking over the full tournament with how good his driver and irons were going. He's got five straight top 15s at majors without really contending at any of them, which you can say is um, not a good showing, but I would argue that playing well over four rounds is still a good... Regardless uh, of when those rounds come, it's still good to play good golf. Yeah, I just don't get the case of like a T12 being bad. Is it a win? No, I, and I understand that. But just because someone's not finishing Scotty Scheffler top three every every week, it doesn't mean that they're not playing well. Um, and, you know, if you stick around, he's got a chance. He's got a really good overall game. Everyone always just talked about how bad he was in majors, and it's, it's getting better. It's getting more solid. And I think that he has the right uh, type of game to win anywhere. So I'm I'm in on uh, Patrick Cantlay and also for Xander Schauffele, uh won last year's Scottish Open and then finished T42 this year. His worst finish of the 2023 calendar year. Again, a T42, 
Uh, he was T10 at the Masters, T18 at the PGA, T10 at the U.S. Open. Got a very complete game. Uh, top 15 in six straight majors. And again, it's not a bad thing to be sticking around. We know that he almost uh, has a almost has a Masters win uh, to his name, which you know I think we kind of forget about because of Hideki uh, being the one to to pull that off. But the thing with Xander especially is if you look at his finishes lately, they're bogged down by poor around the green play. And that is not a very predictive or predictable stat like week to week. He's a very good long-term wedge player. So I think Xander has kind of everything going for him where the odds are lengthening because the finishes are getting a little bit weak in the exact area where you would be okay having them be weak. So among golfers shorter than 50, it's Cantlay and Xander that I'm looking at. And then I'm, I'm looking at John Rom to see where he kind of settles in. Between... Xander and Cantlay. Xander. Do you have a preference? Okay. That yeah. was very fast. Okay. It's Xander. Uh, I just, yeah. It, it, he's He could go out and lead Tita Green. He could go out and lead in putting. Um, I know people say that he doesn't like have it, but he's been around enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually, something's going to break his way, uh, and he can get it done. But, yeah, um, I think those two names, uh, shorter than 50 to 1, are the, the outrights I like. Okay, so Xander Shoffley, 25 to 1, Patrick Cantley at 20 to 1. The two outrights Brandon is looking at right there, or 22 to 1. No, sorry, I got one more. Okay, longer shot? Yeah. Hideki. Oh, where's Hideki? Plus 7,000. Hey. Uh, he's gained strokes from approach play in 17 to 19. 65. Is he dust now? <laughs> no, nah, I'd still be there. I okay. have him at like 65. So it's, okay. it happens to me a lot on this, it feels yeah. like. But. Um, a gain, gain strokes from his approach play in 17 of 19 measured majors in his career. He's never lost more than 0.15 strokes per round with field strength adjustments, uh, according to data golf in the iron department over the past three majors, T 16 at the masters, T 29 at the PGA T 32 at the U S open while losing a lot of strokes putting. And he lost in all three of those still good finishes there. Um, and the thing that really sold me on Hideki is putting is hard to track, but I've done some research into it. Putting from within 15 feet is a pretty good indicator of long-term stroke gain numbers. He's a 43rd percentile putter uh, this year from within 15 feet on the PGA Tour. I will take that. If he puts a little bit positively, he's got the, the game uh, to contend here. Wouldn't mind a top 10 as well for Hideki, just, just to sort of, you know, I don't like, I don't love a lot of long shots at majors. Um, shout out Wyndham Clark, but um, yeah, Hideki, I think, deserves some attention this week. Hideki Matsuyama, 65 to 1. I don't know why I scrolled past him on the screen, but I did. Uh, 65 okay. to 1. Oh, no, they changed the order around. That's why. Uh, 65 to 1 to win this weekend. And I think that, you know, between these guys, you can't argue, oh, they can't get it done. Um, you know, you can't like, oh, well, Hideki can't putt, can't bet him. Oh, Xander hasn't finished a major, can't bet him. Cantley hasn't played well at the beginning of major, can't bet him. Like Hideki has done it. He won the 2021 Masters. Uh, Xander has won a gold medal. I feel weird citing that constantly, but like that's a high pressure situation. Um, so I feel like you got to find something there that is at least enticing. Um, do you like Hideki more than Cantley at their current respective numbers? Uh, no, I like Cantley okay. more. I like a look. I love a good long shot. Um, yeah. But the way that I kind of view it is, you can do both if you split up your unit. Yeah. There, so I would basically lean Cantley, but you don't need as much uh, unit wise on Hideki. So that's basically how I view those. Okay, so outrights are Patrick Cantley twenty two to one, Xander Shoffley twenty five to one, Hideki Matsuyama sixty five to one. We have a lot of non outrights available at FanDuel Sportsbook. Which of those are you seeing value on? Well, I'll just stick with Hideki here, but um, and these are three nationality plays, so you can this should help you out there. Um, I never know which tab this is under. Uh, I believe it's props. Okay, thanks. It should be under groups because it's a group, right? Uh, I don't know. It's a is it props? Yeah, it's under props. Okay. Yeah. So Hideki Matsuyama, top Asian player, uh, plus four ninety, unless he shortened again. But I still think it's all right. Um, He's still four ninety. You're good. Okay. Again, really like the ball striking from him. Hate the putting, but the underlying data is pretty good. Finishing well at majors, not a whole lot of competition. Um, 
which might sound a little bit dismissive, but you know, Byung Hoon On is playing well. Uh, Sung Jae can play well. Siwoo Kim obviously can play well, but I uh, ran this one through my model and like Hideki. Um, Brandon Grace, top South African, plus 320. This one's tough. It's a, it's a weird market, but I have him plus 275. Won the uh, Live Tulsa event, was second in DC in May. Um, not a whole lot of rounds for him, but a lot of like guesswork in this whole market. Um, so with that weak like group to go up against, I think that it's a good number there. Um, at plus three twenty again, I have him around plus two seventy five. And then one final one, uh, Marcel Seem top German plus one seventy. This is a weird one because I like Yannick Paul in this market as well. As in, I like him as the favorite, but there's value on Seam because it's basically a four-man head-to-head with who they're thrown in there with. So I think we're just getting better odds on Marcel Seam um, at plus 170. So I'm good there, even though it's going against the favorite in the group for me. The value is there. I'm sure you've been grinding uh, tape of Tiger Christensen. Is it Tiger or Tiger? I don't actually know what the pronunciation would be there. I'm assuming Tiger, given he's a golfer, but um, <laughs> grinding Tiger Christensen tape to decide if there's value on Marcel Seam? No, but I did okay. double check Marcel Seam's PGA Tour profile page for the pronunciation, and it is Seam. So I thought you'd want to oh. know. I salute you for your efforts. Uh, Again, those uh, nationality bets Brandon likes. Marcel Seemtow, German, plus 170. Brandon Grace, top South African, plus 320. Hideki Matsuyama, top Asian at plus 490. Any final thoughts, Brandon, before we close up shop for today? uh, Talking betting for the Open Championship? A lot of ways you can go um, with everything. It's it's one of those where it, it, it... you know, it, it's tough because with majors, it feels like the the realistic pool of winners is pretty small. Mm-hmm. But even within that, there's probably 20, 30 names that wouldn't astonish anyone. So there's still a lot of ways you can go. Um, and I would just say kind of keep an eye out um, on how things shift and yeah. be open to kind of, you know, either getting in early or waiting, depending on like kind of what you feel. But um, hopefully you can get the right number. And I'm really tracking, uh, again, John Rom this week especially with like fluid markets, you do see yeah. a lot of movement during the week. It's not just after things open where things move. Yeah. Um, so check back later on, see if you, if there's a person you're close on, you know, refresh every now and then see where they settle in. Sounds like Ram is the, pr- the prime guy. Brandon is focusing on there. That is all that we have for today on covering the spread. As mentioned, we are back later on today. We'll be talking about DFS for the open championship live on the FanDuel YouTube page, noon Eastern Tuesday, also up on the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed and the FanDuel TV plus app. So check out those FanDuel TV plus on Amazon fire, Apple TV and Roku and uh, the FanDuel YouTube page, of course, as well. Find us here on covering the spread. Brandon, thank you. As always, good luck to you with your bets for the Open Championship, and I'll talk to you again in an hour and a half. Sounds good. Take care. All righty. Find Brandon on Twitter at Cadula13. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. We're talking Women's World Cup tomorrow with Dr. Ed Fang. That will be a blast as well. We'll talk to you then. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.